I was looking through news and talking with people and I got horribly distracted. And then I realized, looked over and saw what time it was, but you can see what time it is now. I was like, oh, shoot, I should probably start streaming. So, yeah, good evening, everybody. As I am totally prepared for tonight's stream, what are you talking about? Holy cow, my hair is doing magical things. Uh, 300% professional. Oh, God. So, hello, good evening, or day, if you're watching Yvonne. How be you? I hope you are well. Did I put this on the right leg? I have played so little ring fit over the last few weeks that I don't remember which if which is the right leg anymore. I said to say I need the tutorial. Okay. It is left thigh. Oh, I was doing it wrong last time. Ah. Muscle memory actually carried me where I should go. Big joy con. What's your thing? E ha ha ho. All right. Uh, all right, back up. I realize I'm kind of stalling a little bit. I do know I'm stalling ever so slightly, but... I don't know, I just, I have, I want to talk with you guys tonight. I really want to talk with you guys a lot. Straight. Half because and I've negated my go. streaming. Um, bringing your knees up to not negated, uh, ne neglected. My streaming Try to raise your knees upward rather than uh, responsibilities for a couple days. Last time. I guess for a couple right. streams rather. Good. Next. And even the then the streams I have done have been I know they've been so the hard because I have been on. constantly Focus exhausted your knees out. due Last to time. my All right. lack of Good. sleep issues coming Next to a head. So it's the back straightening stretch. This should all be handled and over and with now. Your hips. In like, as all that stuff should be done and over with. Out At least I'm hoping it is. Because, you should be able to feel your thanks back to technology, stretching. I'm actually able to get decent nights, good nights Let's sleep again. And that happened Tuesday night. Yes, just like that. Finally, spread your feet. So... Raise the ring con above your head and I may get lightheaded doing this simply because Face forward even though 
I try to keep myself on the trend of, you know, work out Tuesday, Thursday, a little bit after work, just to get the muscles active inside. Thank you, Kasai, for the host. Oh, I'll be bear I'll be my berries. Sir, oh, how dare you? My berries are very delicate. Very delicate things to talk about. They're growing fine, actually. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, this world. This world sucks. Okay. Alright. Yeah. God, there are so many things I want to talk with you guys about tonight. Like, just because of what has happened with E3 stuff, mainly, but... Well, if that's the correct one, then I don't want to go there. We don't go to the correct one first. We go to the correct one last. Um, but yeah. So E3... <laughs> E3 was a problem for a lot of companies, I feel. Of course, we're, of course, you know, we're playing a Nintendo game with on a PC, so you know where my uh, priorities lie. But, you know, maybe you guys want to kick off the ice talking about something specific. First, instead of me just rambling off and off and off about stuff. Um, as I said, I'm gonna kind of repeat myself. I feel like I've actually got energy for a change to do these, to do this uh, refit stream tonight, because my equipment to help me breathe at night has arrived, and I can actually, I can actually sleep through the night, like all the way through the night without, without need of like melatonin or anything like that or sleep aids. Oh, good. Did, did she, did she not chew enough, or what happened there, man? Like, is she allergic to a, a spice or something? Oh no, sleep bugs! <laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> I'm gonna try this, but if I start falling, I'm just gonna go on both feet. And this is about as high up as you can give me, see me get. It's actually about as high up as uh, Tip is, so. Nope, I'm losing my balance already. Stay rooted until they go away. I'm gonna keep trying. But I make no promises with this. If I start tipping, I'm gonna put my foot down. Thankfully, it doesn't track where your foot is. But yeah, oil fires oil fires are no joke, man. Like, cause because of the nature of oil, you can't just put it out. You can't just put it out with water, because it actually causes it to spread further. Keep trying. I'm actually getting my balance back little by little over the last few weeks, which is great. Anyway. Yeah. Well, I hope she just got some, some, uh, some burns, and that was, that was the whole extent of it. Lord. Looks like we pulled uh. them. And, uh, oh, no. and that sounds, no burns, wow. Tree again. Lucky. Just have to wait it out. Did you have to contact the uh, did you have to contact the authorities on it, so to say? Stay rooted until 
until they go away. Like it's cramping. Yeah, like, do you have to contact fire? Or uh, fire department or anything like that? Okay, good. Jesus. I'm glad she's okay. I'm glad you're both okay, actually. Though that does remind me of something stupid I used to do at the pizza place I worked at when the boss wasn't there. The worst part is he taught, he taught us how to do it. <laughs> but whenever we had downtime on a, on a day and we just could mess around when he wasn't there, we would just take ice cubes out of the back and throw them in the deep fryer just to watch the fireworks. Of course, we only do like an ice cube at a time, but still, dangerous as hell. Don't do it. I would like to know if that's actually the first time I've ever done a tree pose properly. I'm balancing, I'm balancing. God, I feel so alive right now. <laughs> I actually feel really awake for a change when doing a stream instead of the last like two or three streams where I've just been dead. And of course the several streams I just flat out missed because of my body's inability to perform for a stream. Tens. So, while we're doing this, I guess we can talk a, talk a little bit at length about this. So E3, because that happened over the last few days, and I guess now it's been long enough that everybody can kind of talk about without worrying about, worrying about spoiling things for anybody. Okay, before we go on to the E3 talk, let's uh, let's address that a little bit still. So, I've been telling you guys for a little bit that okay. I've been having Let's terrible, and I mean, absolutely terrible sleep because I have sleep apnea. Basically, wind tube. Wind tube is like this normally when you sleep. If you, if you, uh, if all conditions are met, and usually the caveat of those conditions is you stay too fat for too long. Your room pipe likes to do this when you go to sleep. And then you body has to actually wake up to open it back up. So you don't get a full night's sleep. But I got my CPAP replaced so I can actually sleep through the night uninterrupted and without need of sleep aids. And I've just been, it's only been two days back at it. It's only been two days back at using the thing. But I've just, I've just been Johnny on the spot with a lot of things now. Just, I've been ready to go. So hopefully, I say hopefully because I don't know if I'm going to have an episode like I did on Monday. But hopefully we're done with these skipping stream mentalities I've been having because my body just doesn't want to per per perform. Anyway, now on to the main event. So E3. Twist. We had E3 this week, this, this last five right. days or so. Left. Right. Left. Yeah? Right. Left. And Left. Right. I don't know about you guys, Left. Right. but I think Left. the general consensus right. is E3 right. Right. save for Two presentations was a flop. And even then, those two presentations, it was like finding, it was like finding aluminum foil in a, in a, in a, in a, in a gravel pit. It was shiny, and it made us happy that it wasn't gravel. Now, from what I hear, Xbox, Xbox was the first show that kind of 
Xbox was the first the show that took the, took the proverbial the cake for E3 this year with all they did, and I think most of it was because of Game Pass stuff. So like they basically became the Netflix of gaming, and people were really on board with it because it seemed like they were they were honest with their prices, and they were honest with their prices, and were offering like actual proper titles, not always just throwaway indie stuff that a lot of those game passes do. Oh no, I learned a, I learned a bit ago that when you go into these conferences, never, never go in expecting something. Never. Uh, we'll talk more about Nintendo in a minute, but even with Nintendo and the fact that they've got Bayonetta 3, Man, Metroid, Metroid Prime 4 and Breath of the Wild 2 sitting there taunting us. They said they were working on all three of those. Don't even expect those. You do not expect those games out, out of out of that conference, even though you're pretty sure it's going to happen. You can feel it in your stomach, not your arm. <laughs> yeah. Um... Now I don't know everything about every conference that happened this weekend because I'll talk more about that in a second. So you know how uh Oh god I I lost what I was gonna say. Okay. That's what I was gonna say. So for the uh I don't know everything about every conference that happened. I only have hearsay because I basically had to work. I had to be at work or I was doing something else that required all my attention during those conference times. So all I have for the most part is hearsay. Mine's the Nintendo event, which I actually invest in because, oh no, surprise, Nintendo. Nintendo. It's e well, I'm trying. The, the picture I'm trying to paint here is scooters heavily invested in Nintendo and not much else <laughs> outside of PC gaming. So, well, from what I know, um, Xbox kind of what have made everybody happy. Uh, one with Halo Infinite announcement, Halo Infinite multiplayer being free to play on. All, on all Microsoft platforms, that means PC and Xbox Series X1, or Xbox Series X, they need a better name for their next one. Call it the Scorpion, call it the Scorpio, give it a name, no more X's. <laughs> and then the Game Pass thing, which I don't know what the price point was they were asking on it, but Game Pass is, once again, all Microsoft platforms, so PC and Series X. And they're based, and they're offering, they were offering a lot of games on it. But that's all I caught from X Microsoft, is that basically, even though they're trying to stay in the, trying to stay in, or, even though they're trying to stay in the console market, they're at least understanding that, yes, we have a PC market we have to uh, appeal to, so let's appeal to them as well with this stuff. So, the Switch Pro, we'll talk about Switch Pro rumors because it's not part of any E3 presentation. These rumors have been going around for so long and nothing has come out of it that I'm pretty sure it's become a joke at this point. The, the uh, Switch Pro rumors. Like, I want a Switch Pro as much as the next person. I want something that's just a little bit more powerful so the games that Nintendo is releasing now don't chug under extreme duress, which they don't really test for that often. Like, I want to switch okay, pro as much as the next person. Don't forget to switch legs. 
But when you keep saying Switch Pro is going to happen every week for the last three months, your credibility is kind of gone. If it existed in the first place. Also, hang on one second. I realized I did all this and I haven't even tied this. Like I said, I want a Switch Pro. I want a Switch Pro. I want something that, that has a little more power so my games don't, don't lag out on me when a little more than what was stress test happens. That being said, we're coming, we're in the fifth, we're coming up on the fifth year of the Switch's life cycle. This is currently the fourth. 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. Yeah, we're, we're like, start, we're like into the fifth year, fourth year going to the fifth year of the Switch, I believe. I'm going to say that unless Nintendo gives us a Switch Pro within the next, by the next E3, if Nintendo doesn't give us a Switch Pro, the Switch Pro isn't going to happen. They're going to move, they're going to move on to, they're, they're going to start making plans for the next system. Like, and I get the 3DS is a thing and how that all worked. But unless the Nintendo Switch is going to have a 10 year shelf life like the 3DS did, I don't think we're going to get all that stuff. The fact that we have a Switch Lite is probably the most that will happen, unless, like I said, by this, by this time next year, Nintendo says Switch Pro coming out this at this time. So that gold one's probably gonna run away. And oh, no, I was just looking tired. Okay. Oh, I can do three wise now. Like the skill. So yeah. Let me do these because I know I can't talk to you guys while I'm doing these because I'm like looking at the floor and talking. So let me do the pendulum bends and we'll talk more about. Why everybody's probably watching E3 is Nintendo. Why most people are watching E3, Nintendo. Okay, let's go. Fine work. Nice. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Really? This thing is fully charged. In fact, it has not left the charger. Okay, let's move. Well done. Fantastic. Good job. Amazing. Fantastic. These controllers do not leave the charger unless I play ring fit. Alright! Joy-Con! Joy-Con Drift! It's fun, it's not!
<sighs> All right. So. Abdominal twist press rush. I'm going to try and recall the direct as best I can. And I'm going to pull up a picture in a second here once I'm done with this so I can keep myself on the straight and narrow. But we're going to start from the top of the Nintendo Direct, or from Nintendo's E3 conference. Because it's pretty much half the reason why people watch uh, N Nintendo Switch announcements anyway right now. Bend your knees slightly as you so... Kazuya Mishima joins Smash Brothers. I feel like it made that. I feel like that entry or that addition is a long time coming. Because for anybody that doesn't know, the last two main entries in the Smash Brothers franchise. Bandai Namco has helped make the game. With your legs bent slightly, Under Sakurai's uh, watchful gaze, gaze, of course, but Bandai Namco have made sure to stay almost entirely both Super Smash Bros. 4 and Smash Ultimate. So it only stands the reason that somewhere down the line, Bandai Namco gets their fighting game series added to the roster. So, Kazuya, I've never, I've never really played Tekken, okay, let's go. but I study it, I watch enough fighting game bots, and I think I kind of understand the flow of Tekken. Tekken is not, okay. Tekken's not fast, it's like Dead or Alive, it's not fast, yes. it's methodical, button pushes, and once Fantastic. you get the button pushes started, is continuing the methodical pressing to keep someone juggling. But it's also an arena fighter in a sense because you have the third direction to work with. So I imagine Kazuya is going to be a character that's going to that's not going to be super powerful or super fast. He's just going to be able to chain a lot of attacks together very easily. And he's gonna have a lot of wind-up time on a lot of his attacks. Good job. So basically, he's gonna have like, from what well I'm looking done. at, from what we've all seen, Sharp. it seems like in order to fight Kazuya, instead of waiting for your opponent to whip an Good. attack and punish it afterwards, because they'll probably, because they'll probably have quick recovery. He'll probably have quick recovery on just what every one of his moves. It's that you're going to have to challenge every one of his attacks. Because he's going to have a long wide up time in almost everything. Okay. Keep it up. Fantastic. Perfect. You know, as they say, like startup frames and uh, yeah. wind up frames, startup frames, however they want to phrase that. Yes. Yes. Amazing. Or they call it frame. Yeah, frame boxes. Nice. Like, imagine a lot of Kazuya's uh, attacks will have, like, a frame startup. Like, the fastest one will probably be a frame startup of 12 frames. Which, if you want a comparison, that's like playing Ganondorf. But, if you know an attack is going to hit, you can start put, when you're playing Kazuya, when you start putting in those inputs, nice. uh, after you know an attack is going to hit, you just automatically start putting the next input in your chain in, right off the get-go. You don't wait. You don't wait to see where your opponent's going to go. You need to start putting in those next button inputs, because you need to keep juggling the person in place. That's probably what a lot of the gameplay will be, Come is on. just getting that one hit off that will start a combo chain and then keep somebody held in place by the juggle that's Great. immediately going to be part of the moveset and then finish with okay. something that pushes afterwards. Neat. So 
Well, it's like it's gonna like playing a heavy character with the juggling and mind games of a fast character. You got it. Without being able to punish very hard if you miss an attack. Unless it's at the start of the attack. Okay. You made it. Stand up. At least that's how I feel. Again, I have never played Tekken, so I could be wrong in that statement. Anyway, let me pull up my picture. I'm not going to be pulling up for you guys, I'm just going to pull up for myself. Pull up for myself, keep it off to the side here so I can look at it and try and remember what's going on. Because I made this list like short before I started streaming. So. Kazuya, so yeah, Kazuya happened. And... I wasn't, I, I know, I know myself, wasn't wowed by it at all. Again, not a Tekken player. I'm bad at fighting games in general. But, Kazuya kind of, needed, kind, of, kind of was like a welcome addition just because, you know, you think about series that have been ongoing for as long as Smash Brothers, especially fighting game series, if not for Street Fighter or, uh, not final fight. Fatal Fury? No. I forget it right now. Whatever Terry's uh, fighting game franchise is. If it wasn't for the SNK fighting game franchise or Street Fighter, you probably gravitate towards Tekken out of fighting games that you know exist. So, Kazuya's inclusion. Even if you might not be excited for it, kind of a necessary evil. And Tekken can be hyped. And also on that note, just just to keep people remind people, we're gonna learn more about Kazuya next week. Uh, no, uh, week and a half from now, on the 28th on Monday. We'll learn more about Kazuya on Monday, on uh, Monday the 28th. So what I said a minute ago could all be trash, and I could be wrong. Now I'm trying to follow the trend of what happened at Nintendo's E3 while I talk about this, but the picture I have is not following what Nintendo showed off in order. What I have on the list is what it releases at one, what is going to release, or what is going to release in terms of time away from today, what is going to release. But I do know the, the strangest transition happened from that, from Kazuya and Smash to Life is Strange, the whole freaking series coming to Switch. I can't really say I, I can't really judge the game or the game series because I never played it. And the only thing I have to go off with the game is that it's kind of a choose your own adventure visual novel. And unfortunately, I I kind of look I kind of see the game as a negative light because so many people have basically taken Life is Strange and kind of forgive my French but beaten the piss out of it. It's probably a fantastic story driven game. But for me, I mean, I'm not one for story-driven games okay. most of the time. Perfect. Fine work. Nice. Sure. I'm just sort of already damn. So, take that with a grain of salt. Is all I'm gonna say. Is take what I say with a grain of salt. Life is strange coming to switch. Probably fantastic for people who like story-driven games. Someone like me, and um, um, oh boy. Okay, I'm just kind of looking through here, looking at stuff that I know Nintendo specifically had during the conference. I'm picking it out of the list I've got here. 
So I'm, some stuff here is out of order, but I think I'm kind of hitting right now. The notes I'm hitting is probably the is probably the indie stuff or the stuff that kind of got like a one minute a one minute spy, uh, spotlight and then they had to pass it off. Is they had to say, okay, well, you had your time to talk. Now time to move on to our, our things we actually came here to talk about. Ha ha. Uh, that one, that one specifically that I'm thinking about is Two Point Campus. Okay, cool. Uh, Life Sim? Life Builder game? Cool. I personally have never seen the appeal in these games. I've tried playing them a, a handful of times. Roller Coaster Tycoon. I think once. And Sims. A handful of times because I basically had to get everything set up for my little sister when she wanted to play it on my computer. So I can't say I haven't tried. I can't say I haven't tried playing life sim games or life builder games. I just I don't get into it. Um but then we got... Excellent. Keep oh yeah, that was it. So we got, uh... Yes. So the game is already out on some platforms, awesome. but... Well Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 Plus 2, the HD remake that, that came out a while ago and other systems, Excellent. is coming to Switch. Excellent. And I've been eyeballing that game because... Amazing. I started with, with Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3, Great. but... Wonderful. I kind of grew up on the Pro Skater series. They were nice, mindless, dull, just do what you want for a couple, for half an hour a day and try to make a sick trick that breaks your old, the highest trick record. I mean, I like those games, they're fun. I heard bad news about this, about, uh, about, god damn it. I heard bad news about the game, though, in that it, uh, in that it has frame rate issues on on even high end consoles, it has frame rate issues. Okay, let's go. So I'm a little hesitant about getting it on the Switch. I need to see what it looks like on the Switch. And even then, I'm not sure if I'll dive into it. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'll have to see what time tells me. Wonderful. If you got extra extra money and you have a system that isn't the Switch. Look at the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, because it's kind of... It's kind of a building block of a lot of my generation's childhood. Like, even if you didn't play sports games, you played Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Or one of the very similar spin-off sports titles. Kelly Slater's po Pro Surfer, for example. <sighs> thanks, thanks, Madame Toadstool, for... Enlightening me on the fact that that game exists, with a and for speedrun, and for showcasing it for Stack Game Marathon. Also, shout out to Madame Toadstool. Power, but don't overextend yourself. She had a baby this week. Release victory. She had it yesterday morning in the wee hours of the morning. So brand new mama. Oh, I hit no. Oops. Oops. So anyway, okay, I don't think, I'm trying to like pick out what was talked about during the Nintendo conferences specifically while I'm going through this. Okay, this one, okay, I'm trying to like, now, now I'm just going for like, what was a, like a third party release and move up from there. So, okay, Temtem, MMO Pokemon, no thank you. I already have troubles dealing with people with people in MMOs to start with. And MMO Pokemon sounds like a nightmare. Okay. Let's select the skill. Oh right, I can just press the button. But I think Nintendo showed off Temtem coming to Switch, so. Okay, 
So I guess I can't really like pick out what was talked about when and where. So I'm just gonna kind of go through. Okay, that's not okay. I remember now. I remember now something else I can't. So Worms Rumble. I need to actually sit down and watch gameplay of Worms Rumble because Worms fantastic series. Outside of one or two other outliers, Worms is probably the closest you'll get me to a strategy game. Period. But the Worms Rumble is like a real time. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna just try and talk about this. Worms is like a real time combat shooter game, but still 2D, like the classic Worms. Okay, let's go. Well done. I don't know, dude. I don't know if I can get on board with Worms Rumble. Fine work. Fantastic. I understand branching out your. Very nice. Branching out your brand and making it, you know, kind of hitting multiple genres. But I don't think that was the play. Let's see, what else we got here? Even though it's coming to exclusively Excellent. to Switch, Excellent. I think it's coming exclusively to Switch anyway. Good they didn't job. talk about Neo Twilly or Amazing. Neo The World Ends With You. Neat. As strange as nice. it is. Great. Uh, that game comes out next month. Nice. And I need to see Amazing. I need to see footage from it before it decides whether to be in on it or not. Because the World Ends With You, the original one, is regarded as one of the Very best nice. RPGs made, but I can't really... All right. The Switch port kind of, from what I've gathered, the Switch port Fantastic. of that game kind of muddies it. Like, it's not, well done. it's not that good of a game nice. on Switch, unless you're playing uh, handheld mode. Oh yeah, terms of release. Um, so they talked about Monster Hunter, uh, Monster Hunter Stories 2. And, you know, it's a Switch exclusive, so, they, so Capcom needs to try and push that game. I'm enjoying, I like Monster Hunter, the mainstay series. I'm not sure how I feel about the offshoot games, because there's not two of them with Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter Stories 1 and 2. Hey oh. Okay, let's move. So I'm not too sure about Monster Hunter stories. Amazing. Okay. Awesome. Fantastic. Wonderful. Let's see. And again, everything I'm gonna talk about right now is like in terms of release. I may jump around a bit here and there because I'm gonna probably get sidetracked. Fantastic. Um and of course, Nintendo, be, or Nintendo being what they are with Zelda, they kind of they kind of tried to rush through a whole bunch of Zelda news in five minutes, which it should. Which, if you have Zelda to talk about, you should probably invest more than five minutes into Zelda. It should really be close to like fifteen minutes, but whatever. Um, so Skyward Sword HD comes out next month. I'm not so sure how I feel about it, to be honest. Okay. Like, I have the original Skyward Sword, and I've never played it. And I would like to get Skyward Sword HD simply because 
it has a better it has a better control scheme option. Cause I'll tell you this much from what I played of the Twilight Princess. The Wiimote, even with advanced technology, still kind of lacks in tracking properly your movements. And we don't talk about how the nunchuck works because it, uh, the nunchuck does not work in motion. Like at all. Forward, up, down, left and right, all register is the same thing with the nunchuck. And Nintendo said, hey, what if we made the nunchuck do all those motions, but it's not but it's not sophisticated enough to do all those motions. We're going to make it do all those motions. So basically, the control scheme, the new control scheme, or even or hell, even playing with the with the two Joy Cons, like has me wanting to play that version more than the original Wii version of the game. But. Even with that tacked in, I'm not all that sure I want to. I'm not all that sure if I want to get the game because I have the game and haven't even touched it yet. It's gonna kind of boil down to: Do I ha do have I saved myself enough money to afford a throwaway purchase? Is what that's gonna boil down to. Um, August. So we're in August now for games that I'm anticipating, or games that were talked about that I remember being talked about. I don't think they talked about during the direct, actually. If not, they just gave it a quick throwaway, but No More Heroes 3 comes out in August, two months from now. Hey, a Peridot, I need that. Uh, No More Heroes 3. I never played the first two No More Heroes. I played the spin-off 2.5 game, Overhead bed. but I haven't played a lot of it, so I know No More Heroes has a huge cult following, but I've played almost none of the series, nor do I own any of the series at this point. And that was all Nintendo talked about then. So in September, so September's rolling around. Okay, this was talked about early on. I gotta look at the name, it's very small. It's small. So, Austria Ascending. It looks like it's kind of an indie game, so to say. It's an indie game that is like a, uh, Odama. I'm trying to think of the company. I think it's Clover, who do the hand-drawn stuff. Or it was Studio Clover. They did uh, Mirror Moss of the, De the Demon Blade as well. That company looks like they're coming out with an RPG. Because the game is fully, like, fully drawn graphics. Okay, but it's an RPG. Like, you know, a traditional JRPG. You know, fight God, befriend God, that stuff. Good job. And I'm, I'm all for for traditional RPG. Like, that has my attention, full on. Nice. Okay. I just need to see more of the game to decide if I'm going to invest in it or not. But that's in September and whatnot. Um, oh, yeah. They talked about Dragon Ball Z Kakarot coming quick. All right. Which I think it basically is the definitive edition of the game, quote unquote. It's gonna chug. It's gonna chug like crazy, but it's gonna have all the DLC. Neat. So if you don't have Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, that's probably a decent pickup because I think the game is good. Very nice. I think Dragon Ball Z Kakarot Perfect. is a decent game. It just gets a lot of backlash because. A lot of the stuff in it is canned from from Xenoverse, the Xenoverse titles, and yeah, it it's not doing stuff anymore, any favor, so to say. Great! 
But I would like to play more of it because it actually does talk, it does go kind of more into the life of the Z Warriors outside of the fights that happened throughout the, the main Dragon Ball Z st uh, story. Fantastic. And it even resurrects Amazing. some characters from Dra from the original Dragon Ball that were thought dead, like Aider and Launch and Nam. You know, they kind of they make appearances. I think, uh, done. I think Pao Tai, or Pao Tai Tai, whatever his name is, I think he also makes appearances as well. Yes. Uh, anyway. Yes. Nice. So now I've gone through everything that I'm not so excited for or need to see more on, let's talk about the big one that I want to see. Okay. Let's talk about the ones, the game... The game that I wanted so bad, and this series needs so much more love, but I understand it's so hard to do considering what it is. Excellent. And that is WarioWare. WarioWare is stupid. Awesome. Fine work. But it is a good Beat kind of stupid. Up. Basically, outside of the Game Boy Advance titles, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull the uh, I'm pulling the GameCube game into this as well because the GameCube game was the Game Boy Advance title turned into a multiplayer game. But outside of the game, uh, outside of the Game Boy Advance titles, I have I own and have played to death pretty much every single WarioWare title, <laughs> it, minus Game and Wario. I own it, but I. Uh, I think I played like 20 minutes of that and I put it down forever. Nice. We don't talk about Game and Wario. Great. But it looks like they're treating uh, WarioWare Get It Together. Oh. They're treating like WarioWare Get It Together. They're treating it more like a like a Smash Brothers esque kind of thing, as weird as it is. Except it's forced co-op only. It's not competitive, really. Which is fine. Okay. But I find okay. it impressive because they basically have made probably 300 micro games. And they've had to tailor the games in such a way that each character's control style that, is good, that, that you're going to use, each character you use to control can complete each and every minigame, or almost every minigame. So that means they put a lot of work into the micro games to make them completable in 10 plus ways. Fantastic! Nicely done! Well done! Amazing! And for anybody watching your wallet, you know, get it together is going to be one. It, I've already bought the game because I'm so confident in it. Get it together is going is one of those games that is one of those games that Nintendo puts out. That yes, it's done in house by Nintendo by Nintendo's own development team and all that jazz, but it's less than the normal price of a game. It's only a fifty dollar game compared to the sixty dollars everywhere else. I will tell you that I have played. Yes. Of all the yes. WarioWare titles, I think Excellent. I have played. One 
an ungodly amount of touched. Like, it's between WarioWare Touched and Tetris DS for my most played DS game. Okay, so we're done with that. Let's, okay, let's reel back a little bit because I think Nintendo is shoehorned this in for like a quick minute just because it's releasing later this month, like exactly one week from now this month. Uh, Mario Golf Star uh, su uh, s Mario Golf Super Rush. There we go. Already, I've already bought. It. I love Mario Golf, the whole series, N64 to current day. Love it. Good game series. Best game series. Fight me. Every game is good in some capacity. Fight me. Even though I haven't played the Game Boy, the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance ones actually, even those are even those are good because it's still golf, but it's an RPG. I know a lot of people did. What was the limit on that, by the way? Was it like 80 games? Or could you just keep going until you ran out of memory on your Wii? I think it was a Wii title. No, I think it was a DS, a DS title. My bad. I think it was specifically a DSi title because you could take pictures and use them in the games. That's actually one of the ones I haven't touched, oddly enough, of WarioWare. Uh, anyway, so we'll come back to Mario in a minute while we're coming for uh, October releases. October, uh, kind of stacked, by the way. Okay, so you made it on the DS or DSi and sent it to the Wii. I think. Again, I don't. I'm not 100% on that. Anyway, I'm gonna move on because I'm gonna keep losing my track. So, a lot of people, so Super Monkey Ball, Banana Mania, I did his name, I couldn't read it. So, Super Monkey Ball, uh, again, it's another game I've never played, never played the series, but a collection of all three of the good Monkey Ball games on one Switch cartridge with HD graphics, sign me right the heck up. Like for some reason, everybody loves Monkey Ball. It's stupid. It's hard as it's hard as nails. Okay, let's move. Crush it with the inside of your Or eyes. tough as nails, I should say. Excellent. It's tough as nails. Good job. But it's just snap, snap. Start level, end level. Start level, okay. end level. It just goes so fast that even Great. when you do fail, you Nicely don't, you can't done. get mad for so long because you can just you can yes. just get right back yes. into the mix. No way. Perfect. So I want to experience all three of the games in that, Amazing. to the point where, uh, where okay. surprise, I've already bought the game. Very nice, fantastic. All right. So the next one, it's also coming out in October. Excellent. Mario Party Wonderful. Superstars. Great. Who lad? Sharp. Who boy? Oh boy, it took Nintendo like 10 years, but they realized what sells the game. And what sells Mario Party? Homad! Fine work. Yes! Yes! Basically, I know there's a couple people that watch me that are work that aren't old enough to have been around when the N64 was a big thing. But Mario Party started on the N64, 
and excluding a couple of the mini games, this is basically going to be N64 Mario Party the great the greatest hits. That's what this game is. With online play, with online play and drop in drop out play for online play. Hula. Kids say, that's a spicy meat ball. Okay. Sharp. One left. Right on. You made it. Like I'll tell you right now, it's probably going to be, there's probably a pretty good, it's probably going to be pretty, pretty far up there for one of the best Mario parties ever made, even though it's just a best of game. Anyway, I need to actually be standing up for this next part, so we're going to have a little break and everything. Actually, while we break from this, because I think it's going to come out about that time that I can talk about this, is that we're going back to Zelda for a minute. So, okay, let's move. Nintendo is putting out a Game & Watch for Zelda. I'm cramping. Raise your lower back. For a minute. Hello, pretty of time and friends. Oh, let me actually get up next to the microphone so I don't have to yell. I'm gonna throw up a set. Okay. Hello, pretty of time and friends. Eh. I am Pretty Scooter. I raided Pretty of Time recently while I was playing Zelda 2, so I don't know if this is a repayment or what. <laughs> but hi, I'm Pretty Scooter. Every Thursday I do this thing where I play Ring Fit. And I talk about kind of life in general instead of the game. So, we're talking about E3 right now, and about half, I'm about halfway through, I'm about halfway through, um, about halfway through, like, the, e, the Nintendo E3 presentation. So, if you want to talk about something more specific, uh, maybe wait a little bit. <laughs> maybe a little bit, and we'll re recircle around back to some things. Anyway. Pretty time. Thank you so much for the raid. Here's me shilling myself because everybody who gets raided does this. I'm Scooter. I've known I've known Pretty Time for probably the better part of seven years at this point. And though, as he has said, and I and and I will confirm with him, uh, we have not talked all that much in the last seven years. It's kind of a mutual failing. I'm gonna say mutual failing. It's probably mostly on me because I have the I have the social graces of a cheese grater. But hi, I stream three days a week normally. Some days I fail because I usually stream right after work. If you want to see me on other platforms besides this, look down below me. I've got a YouTube channel and a Twitter page and even a Discord. I think that's where they are. <laughs> okay, I'm done chilling. So I was, as I was down here on the floor doing these hip raises, I was talking about the Zelda Game & Watch. So the Zelda Game Watch. All right. Wonderful. For one, I've already bought one. In fact, I bought two. Very nice. Because I'm going to give one to my nice nephews done. for Christmas. Yes. This actually ties yes. in perfectly for you, Pretty, because you awesome. just beat Zelda 2. That little thing is going to have Zelda 1, Zelda 2, and Link's Awakening on it. All right. Amazing. So I'm pretty hyped for that, but that's just me. I'm an old fart. 
I grew up playing the physical ver- I grew up playing those games on the NES and Game Boy, respectively. So, of course I'm gonna get it. The next thing I want to talk about, I need to stand up to talk properly about this. So this is going to be a minute while I finish these sets. Because trust me, I want to talk about this next one. Being a recent fan of the series. Also, I hate the tracking for these hip raises. since I've last done these hip raises. Well done. So I'm exhausted already. <laughs> Actually, while I'm down here on the floor, let me tell my story a little bit about why I play Ring Fit so much on stream. Even though the game's been out for over a year and a half, and I've beaten the game once already, the main story mode. So... can attest to this, Wonderful. but I was a fairly large lad at one point in my life. Good job. Ten more. I, I There were no scales that could weigh me for a long period of time, but I'm pretty sure for a large period, for a period of my life, which I knew pretty, or I met pretty at a con, I was 400 plus pounds. A lot of us estimate 440. Nice. Those people being my family and myself. Nicely done. Good job. How many left? Seven? Okay. Excellent. So So about five years ago. I got done with my job doing phone phone call, phone reception kind of stuff, and I got a physical labor job in a factory. Nice. And Amazing. that helped me lose some of my weight. Good job. Three. I was still a large lad at like 360-ish, but I lost some weight over the course of like Great. three years. Nice. And then. Two years ago or so, roughly. Okay. Excellent. One I got one. on my own case and I said, you know what? I'm tired of being fat. Okay. You made it. So I started working out like crazy and dieting like crazy. And now as I stand up you'll see, I am standing in front of you as a spelt 250 pound man. I can't really lose much more weight. Hold on, I'm getting lightheaded. I can't really lose much more weight because of my genetics and my body frame. If I go much below 250, 240, I start looking anorexic. But Ring Fit was there for some of it, was there for some of this to help keep me, to help kind of keep me in shape. And work on my stamina so I can stay in shape. Slowly bend to the left. Oh no, I can't bend, bend while doing this. Never mind. <laughs> bend to the left. I don't have the best bounce. Don't let your raised foot touch your supporting leg's knee. So yeah, that's why I play Ring Fit. Uh, just because I try to be a positive enforcement for people to get better for yourself, make yourself feel better. Even if you don't lose weight, to at the very least, do better for your body. And I stream this every every Thursday because I use it as a sign. I use it as a guidepost of if some 
if some 30 plus loser on the internet can drop 100 plus pounds in a year, anybody can. Okay, let's switch sides. Don't forget to switch legs. Anyway, so we're back over to E3 stuff now as I'm getting a cramp in my right calf. So back over to E3 stuff. So then, so the next game that is on my list here that I'm talking about, that I want to talk about, I have only been a fan of the series for about five-ish years. But I am losing my mind at this game. Metroid Dread. I played Metroid Fusion about three years ago. And if Super Metroid didn't do it for me, Metroid Fusion made me fall in love with the series. Metroid Fusion was creepy as hell. It was action-packed. It had it had very, well, had mostly good lo uh, lo exploration ideas. And Metroid Dread looks like more of what Dread is. Or Dread, Dread, or Metroid Dread looks like more of what Fusion is. Occasionally running around blasting baddies with, with reckless abandon. But occasionally, and forgive my French here, by the way. I'm going to curse once. I usually don't. But occasionally, you have to go, Oh shit. I'm going to die. I need to run. <laughs> I am beyond elated for Metroid Dread. Like, holy crap. We keep going. I played for about, I played for about an hour in-game timer over there. So, if anybody's wondering about how long I play Ring Fit. I might go a little long because I've been slacking on playing Ring, uh -huh. uh, on playing Ring Fit lately. Just because I of medical reasons, aka CPAP stuff. Uh, the least to say is that I, uh, basically because of the mass amount of weight I had, I have, I have to use a CPAP now, I have sleep apnea. I haven't had my CPAP for about a month because it broke on me, and now I gotta replace it one, and now I'm actually able to sleep well, so. I'm going to try and get back on my own case. Anyway, that aside. But Metroid Dread is... Metroid Dread is... Cool that! No. <laughs> I... What's the reward? What's the reward for Squattery Wheel? It... It's... Okay, it's money. Never mind. If it was something besides money, I would have taken it. But yeah, just Metroid Dread. Who that? Ha! Okay, I think I've accurately explained what it's like, what it's like to get excited for a Metroid game. For those of you who have not gotten excited for a Metroid game ever. Um, so they didn't talk about it, but it is still Nintendo. By the way, I'm going by like release window right now while I'm talking about stuff, not by when it was talked about in the E3 presentation. So forgive me if I'm jumping around and talking about stuff that wasn't even talked about. But November, we're into November now. October's over. We're into November, and I've talked about everything I care about in October. November, the Gen 4 remakes. I got back into the Pokemon series with Generation 4, Platinum specifically. So you would think that I would, you know, after missing all of Gen 3 and even a majority of Gen 4, you know, that I would be, you know, I would be like, my childhood, I need to play. I'm actually not. Great effort. 
I'm kind of fence sitting if I'm going to get a Gen 4 title right now. Oops, I missed it. Oh well. Because Pokemon's been kind of weird with their games lately. Oh boy. Pokemon's been kind of weird with their games and their releases lately. I'm going to jump right over. Yeah, go me! So I'm kind of fence sitting on the Gen 4 remakes because I need to see what they do with it and how they do it. Oops. Oh well. Nice. 69, 69 experience? Nice. Yes, there is. And I think the... And I think how that works... I think how the math for that one checks out is... Because I'm friends with... Joe Schiller... Who edits for Arlo... And Arlo... Who has probably worked with MatPat... That's, that's that six degrees of separation of how I'm connected to MatPat. Whew! Oh, I can do three wise here? Hell yeah. But we don't talk about our we don't talk about connections or flaunt our connections. I mean we do. Oh. Oh, okay. Drink water, by the way. But yeah, recover a little bit here. I try not to bring up my relation to, I try not to bring up my relation to other people I know as a clout flex because that's name dropping and I've been terrible at name dropping in the past so I've been trying to get better about it. But, but seeing as it was relevant to the conversation, that's the only reason why I'm name dropping. Anyway. But here's the other thing that's coming out in November. That's kind of been a long time coming. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei 4. I can write that in Japanese, by the way. Both Hiragana and Katakana. They'll probably not write it properly because I don't know when you use hiragana or katakana. <laughs> anyway, that point aside. So, Shin Megami Tensei... Jesus. Okay, anyway. Um, Shin Megami Tensei 5. When it was announced, when it was initially announced that it was in development, I'm pretty sure that it was like five years ago, maybe even longer. And at that point, I had not played Persona 4 Golden. I had not streamed Persona 4 Golden yet, so I never understood why the Shin Megami Tensei series is so beloved. Fast forward to two days ago. I have, I have, as of two years prior, gotten the good ending of Persona 4 Golden. And kind of understand why people love this an this uh, anime RPG series. Now, I'm kind of fence-sitting on Shin Megami Tensei 5 because I would like to play okay, another entry in that sides. game series. But, I'm fence-sitting because it is a bare minimum 100-hour investment as is with every one of those games, bare minimum 100 hour investment. I want to say it again, bare minimum 100 hour investment. I'm a busy man, I don't think I have all that time anymore. 
So I'm fencing on it, waiting for some reviews to come out to see what people say about it. And then, uh, so after that, we roll up on December with Advanced Wars. So, the crazy sons of guns, they said, hey, we know you like tactics games, and, uh, you know, Fire Emblem's big. What about Advanced Wars? You know, that other strategy game we put on the Game Boy Advance and brought to the West. Okay. And me, I'm bad at strategy games. I tend not to play them. Strategy, tactics, whatever you want to say. So, I personally am going to let that one slide under the radar. But for folks that love that kind of game and that kind of series, get it. Yes, get it. Yes, get it, Queen. And show Nintendo you love your Advance Wars. Because this is probably them as close as they'll get to putting out an Advance Wars title in, in forever. And they're testing the waters to see who will buy another Advance Wars game. So if you like Advance Wars, go, 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 go. It's the same reason why I'm buying WarioWare Get It Together. with Pokemon, but set in familiar locales, yes please. This will focus on your wings. Oh, it's a rush. I'm like waiting for the attack. Oops. Oh, I skipped over one. I skipped over Dang and Rampa Decadence. <laughs> so I'm spoiled. Excuse me. I'm spoiled on the Day and Rafa series because I watched a friend play all three games, all three main games, and I myself have played Ultra Despair Girls. So me buying the game, unfortunately, it doesn't do me any good to buy the game. Like it makes no sense for me to buy that collection. Like at all. Keep going. Like the skill. What I will say though is if you enjoy Phoenix Wright or interactive what is it? Interactive visual novels or visual novel adventures, whatever the actual name of that genre is. It's a little gruesome and a little crass, but give it a try. Right, I actually have to select this first before I do it. Okay, let's go. Bend your knees like the Alright, so I'm still looking through everything here before I jump back to beyond this year. Releases. Good job. Awesome. Um, oh yeah. This one got leaked. <laughs> this one got leaked ahead of E3 in general. Just like its predecessor game. Uh, Sparks of Hope, I think is what it's called. Mario plus Rabbids, Sparks of Hope. 
So I know I've said before, I'm bad at strategy. I'm bad at tactics. Mario and Rabbids is actually one of those games that broke that broke through that ceiling or that glass pane of I won't play tactics than I have. I adored the hell out of the Mario plus Rabbids games. The Rabbid game, Mario plus Rabbid game? Our Kingdom Battle? I adored the hell out of it. I 100% of that game. I bought the DLC. I 100% of the DLC. I did everything that the first game had to offer. Front to back. I bought every weapon for every character because I played so many of the maps and camp or so many of the uh, challenges. And just yeah, I I did everything in that game. Everything. So the fact that we got a sequel to it, like I think almost everybody wrote the Kingdom Battle off as a one and done. It's never going to happen again. The fact that we are getting a sequel to it, it makes me elated. Because I get to go back to what is probably my, what's going to be one of my, what was one of my surprise favorite games from 2017? The 2017 or 2018? Whatever year it released, it was, it was a surprise favorite game in the series, favorite game of that year. I thought it was going to be all stupid rat, rabbit wah jokes, but the music was fantastic, the gameplay was fantastic. The writing was fantastic. The slapstick was almost great about the game. By the way, I think that game's 15 bucks with DLC. Try it, please. Anyway. So let's talk about... So let's hit that final keynote. Let's hit that final point. That final note of Nintendo's presentation. What I told everybody that they shouldn't sit there and hope for, even though it's pretty much guaranteed to be talked about. Let's talk about Bre the Breath of the Wild 2. Because they finally showed some in-game footage, some cinematic, some cinematic and some in-game footage of the game. They finally talked about it. And all I gotta say is right now, I'm still fencing a little bit. I'm probably gonna get it, but I'm also fence sitting a little bit on the game itself. Because it looks like it is the first game expanded. With and, and also with a couple new abilities. Like a time rewind and a raindrop ability to basically go up through platforms. Basically okay, get yourself to the sky on this. That they showed off. Basically, I'm basically with that one. I'm all hyped for Breath of the Wild 2. I am here for Breath of the Wild 2. Between the years of 2017 and 2019, I did two 100% walkthroughs of the normal mode of Breath of the Wild, and I. Did a mostly 100% walkthrough or playthrough on Twitch of Master Mode of Breath of the Wild. Great. Nice. Okay. Great. Although that topic keeps popping up of awesome. oh weapon durability, oh Very weapon nice. durability. Uh. Nice. To which I say, really? You're gonna get, you're gonna waffle on the game because Wonderful. of weapon durability? Like, I know some people have saved their case Amazing. upon why they don't like the weapon durability system from the first game. And I know one of those people, personally. But how fun would the game be if you found the strongest weapon of the game from the get-go and it never broke? And you just and you just plow through every enemy. Anyway, I didn't mean to heal turn this into a defend Breath of the Wild uh, post.
just know I'm probably going to get Breath of the Wild 2. There's a good chance I'm going to do it with Breath of the Wild 2, what I did with Breath of the Wild 1, where any free time I have, period, is going to be spent playing that game. And probably in secret, and probably in off camera or in private. When the first Breath of the Wild came out, you should feel it in your I, stomach. Not your arms. When the first Breath of the Wild came out, I sat down and over the course of three weeks, I beat that game 100%. Using, only using a walkthrough when I was missing like four shrines. I then turned around, immediately after that, recorded a 150 episode walkthrough series, 20, 20 to 30 minute episodes each of that game over the next three weeks. And put that out. On the hot tubs. So I don't know if I'm going to go that crazy with Breath of the Wild 2, but there's a chance it could go that crazy, potentially. And there's actually kind of an interesting fan theory going on about um, Breath of the Wild 2. And because they, they never showed okay, Link's face throughout a lot of the airborne, um, throughout a lot of the skyborne mechanics, they never showed Link's face. To which people are speculating. Potentially, this could be a game where you choose you choose who you play as, and who you don't get to play as gets tossed is the one who gets tossed into the pit from the cinematic opening. Because comparing the cinematic trailers, both Link and Zelda have held the torch, and the theory is that whoever you select to play as holds the torch in that opening cutscene. I don't know. I like that theory. But I think it also it's also kind of like a rabid fan theory of I want to play as Zelda. Let me play as Zelda on the bunga. You should feel the targeted areas being worked. Overall, even though Nintendo didn't really have a hard, a uh, very high bar to cross, I think Nintendo, probably the best conference out of the thing, followed by Xbox. Like, I want to say, again, Xbox is all hearsay. Xbox was probably a solid 7 out of 10. Nintendo was a 7.5. But something to keep in mind is that Nintendo, or keep, something to remember keep in mind, is that everybody around the world was affected by the pandemic. Keep squeezing. So even though we've had a lot of games get announced this year, some of them are still bare bones games. Like a handful of them are probably still bare bones games with bare bones titles. Don't push it. Take because... Yes, people are able to work remotely from home. But communicating and transferring that data around is, was rough as hell.
Just... Just paint the picture. Just think about it in your head for a minute that... Very nice. A company of at least 200 game developers, artists, coders, um, model riggers, some, some maybe even with mocap technology that I had to work with. Think about that for... Fine work. And some of them are still Amazing. under the pandemic issues, by the way. Like, America was the, is like the first country to come out of this on top. And even then, we're still struggling. Anyway, this is not a good commentary on pandemics. You know, for, I'm using Nintendo as the main example. For a company like that, with 200 plus employees who actively make the games, and then the 100 plus that manage those teams, as well, communicating and sending that data around was a highly confidential thing, and it... Uh, I just got, I mostly gushed about uh, Breath of the Wild 2, mostly, and Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. I'm now kind of wrapping up my thoughts on E3 right now. But yeah, like, keep in mind, like, all those people still transfer all that data around in super high confidentiality scenarios where if anybody had their, had their line tapped into or they got tunneled into by an outside source. Everything that a company was working on was up in smoke. Great. Or the surprise for it was ruined. And people still, and some people still having to do that. But a lot of people, but a lot of people having to do that and deal with that. For some people now, still ongoing, of. 16, 17 months, a year and a half, is impressive. But also speaks to the fact that that's why, Wonderful. if you're expecting more things from E3 this year, you're okay. probably expecting too much. Very nice, amazing. Because transferring ideas and data when you can't physically touch someone to make it instant transmission, that's hard. And what if somebody's on a bad internet connection and they upload and they have to upload several models that are a gigabyte in size and that, and that has to get transferred around between people multiple times a day? Fantastic. And, some, and a, couple, a couple of your employees have bad internet? That's half a day wasted waiting for models to get transferred around. Or art Perfect. assets. Like, again, just, uh, I know a guy who knows a guy kind of thing. Like, I applaud one of my friends who worked on the game Scavengers. Or Scavengers, excuse me. In joke, we call it Scavengers. Um, a friend who made Scavengers, a friend who worked on Scavengers. Nice. You know, they released that game All right. Ten more. earlier this year, basically Come at on. still near the peak point of the pandemic when nobody could leave their house still. They released that game. Okay. And I have fought the people and other people who work under that duress well and put out huge projects like that. Okay. Three. Fantastic. Yes. yes. And again. One left. You made it. Stand if up. you went into E3 expecting 300 games you expected too much of a year that was post-pandemic. Uh, or of a year that was all pandemic worry. <laughs> Feel it in your stomach when you breathe out. I don't know why. I had some Swedish fish before I started streaming tonight. And that bird tasted like them. It tastes like fruity pebbles actually, but it still tastes like them. Can do it. Okay! 
But all I'm going to say going forward is, when it comes to Nintendo, what news we should expect of Nintendo post E3 is they're probably going to talk more about Splatoon 3, Breath of the Wild 2, and Pokemon Arceus. And that's probably going to be it all the way up until all the way up until E3 2022. Don't expect anything else out of Nintendo. Maybe Bayonetta 3 or Metroid Prime 4, no well 4 news, but Keep save that hype for those games for the, for the next E3. Because Kamiya's tired of being harassed, so he's probably actively delaying the game because of the act of harassment for Bayonetta 3. And Metroid Prime 4 had to start over from scratch last year. So they, so they probably don't have anything right now to show for Metroid Prime 4. Other than probably a very terrible looking tech demo. Now, there are some other games on this list here that I can see that are games that were not talked about during E3, or if they were, they weren't a focus of any conference I was watching. But I'm still going to mention them and kind of talk about what I feel about them here. Kind of in terms of what's coming out when. So I think next week, I think next week or within the next 10 days, because, <laughs> surprise, this month, is, there's only 10, about 10 more days left for this month. Within the next 10 days, a remake of a Sega CD Japan exclusive shooter called Cotton Fantastic. is coming out. Amazing. I mean, when I say shooter, I mean schmump. Spa uh, spaceship shooter. Awesome. The original Alex Kidd HD Eight. and Legend of Mana HD are all coming out within the next 10 days. I'm going to need to see all three of those games before I decide if I want to go in on them. But those are the three games that have my attention. Uh, Ninja Gaiden Master Collection, I think, is out or about to be out. Within the, ne within the next 10 days as well. But I'm fence-sitting on that one because I love the Ninja Gaiden Sigma series for what it is. It's basically the ste next stepping stone to playing Dark Souls. Except way more action oriented. But apparently there are frame rate there are some frame rate issues with the first two games in that collection. Like there's issues with that collection. Uh what else do we got? I already mentioned uh, Neo Neo the end world ends the world ends with you. Oh yeah, that thread, that thread is really is really interesting. Oh, let's keep going. Like, here, let's keep I'll keep that thread going because I um they'll go back to what like what games are gonna release that weren't talked about E3 that I'm excited for. Fine work. Okay. So let's put it this way. Okay. Ten more. Good job. Me. Me and Charles, to some extent, are friends with a YouTuber called Gilly the Kid. We're kind of acquaintances at this point and not so much friends anymore just because we fell out of the loop but we know him because of somebody called alternate 24 i've rated him a couple times but because of our connection to alternate 24 we're connected we know gilly the kid and because we know gilly the kid six degrees of separation we know gerard the completionist <laughs> and several members of the normal boost cast Continue that. Again, you I know Yo Schiller. Awesome. Yo Schiller knows Chugger Conroy. There's that. So six degrees of separation, I could possibly meet up with Chugger Conroy. And I could also six degrees of separation meet up with Nintendo Capri Sun, Proton John, Masayanella, Adriana Figueroa, Family Jewels. You know that you know that whole family under the TRG branding. <laughs>
Drop your hips. Let's do a quick pulse check here. And then I'll do a quick calorie check because I might be wrapping up after this next set depending upon how long it takes and how many calories I can burn. Okay, that's not that bad. So let me see. Um... Let's continue this. So back to the games coming out soon. Um, Blaster Master Zero 3 is coming out next month. I need to see it, but I'm kind of on the fence on it. I own Blaster Master Zero, and I've been sit fence sitting on Blaster Master Zero 2, basically waiting for a sale on it. So basically a trilogy of a re of a rebirth of blaster master is on the horizon also a game i've been really watching chris tales is coming out next month i'm probably going to end up getting the game regardless i'm just waiting for it to get closer to the actual release date on that one to make sure i'm not wasting my money uh the yeast series yeast 11 i think is what we're looking at yeah or no yeast 9 yeast 9 comes out next month Samurai, sh uh, Samurai Warriors. Yeah, Samurai Warriors, another Musou game comes out next month as well. Kind of like the, kind of like the main staple Sam uh, Musou fighter game. Like one of three main staple Musou fighter games. That's like the anchor point of that whole genre. Uh, September. Sonic Colors Ultimate comes out. Already bought it. <laughs> People are fence, are fence sitting on it because of one mechanic or another, which fine, that's their stance. I don't. Uh, that's fine. But Sonic Colors better is an investment that I'm gonna I'm willing to make. Uh, apparently there's going to there's an apparently I just found this out today there is another binding of Isaac game coming out but I need to see it and see if it's worth it because I've bought the same binding of Isaac game twice now effectively actually three times because I bought two steam ver two, two steam games of binding of Isaac and I also have a physical copy of binding of Isaac repentance Um, still coming this year is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, basically Turtles in Time 2. Spelunky 2 is coming this sometime this year as well. What else we got down here? Oh, oh yeah, that's the big one. I didn't talk about it from the Nintendo thing. Cruise and Blast is coming out sometime this year. Arcade racing games. I love arcade racing games. They're like the best thing besides Musou Fighters and beat em ups. Uh, there's a new Phantom Breaker game, which that game is, that game series is, it's a beat em up series, but very heavily based on waifus. And not like, and not like your standard anime waifu, like, Chibi waifus. It's weird. I know it's weird. Let's not talk about it any further. You can get more power um. Don't extend the past your toes. What else we got here that's coming out this year? Uh, uh, Riot Games Ruined King, which is supposed to be a action RPG title. Riot makes some really good characters and letting them flesh out their story world. Who? So letting them write out their. Letting them embellish on their story and their world in a game that's not. 
a MOBA. Support it, I, I say. Huh. Ooh, one second, I'm getting lightheaded. Uh, I know I've got some friends that are probably pretty excited for Digimon Survive. I am not one of those people. But that's a game coming out this year. over a title fatal frame Keep going. Don't lose steam now. all right I need a minute with some water. <sighs> For anyone that doesn't know what Fatal Frame is, it's a horror game where your only means of defending yourself is a 1980s flash photography camera. Maybe 1950s. Who lad? Who? Hey. All that energy that I talked about about half an hour ago? <laughs> I think I talked about everything from E3 I wanted to mention. Like, there's this list here of games coming out this year, and ones for announced for basically early 2020 as well that I'm looking at while I talk about this. So, there's probably some games I'm missing, and some games I'm not even talking about because they have no appeal to me whatsoever. I think Neon White was actually a game I was interested in, or I'm thinking about something else. I can't remember right now. The title makes me think I was, but I can't remember anymore. So yeah, I kind of went off on a tangent and went off on what well, went off. I kind of went off on the de uh, off on the tangent and everything. Basically, to summarize, from Nintendo, from Nintendo specifically, Mario and Rabbids Two. Uh, WarioWare, Metroid Dread, Super Monkey Ball, Mario Party Superstars, Breath of the Wild 2, of course, and some of the things that weren't talked about that were Nintendo specific, but I'm sticking to E3 specific. Oh, and that, uh, what is it? That Arcanum. Oh, it's, it's circled right here. Hold on. Uh, Astria Ascending, that too. Like, that's six, that's six, seven titles that have my attention that I'm probably going to get the Nintendo address during the Z3. What about you? What about you, dear viewers? From what you remember from E3, what are you after? Oh, by the way, I should—I forgot to mention this earlier. I glazed over it. Uh, Nino Kuni 2 and Diablo 2 Resurrection are also coming in September. <laughs> so if you want RPGs, September's got you covered, my guy. There are three, there are three RPGs, two of them long-standing series, coming in September. And then 
RPGs again in November, but we don't talk about those two RPG those two RPG entries right now because I need to see more. <laughs> Alright, back to it. What a wonder, two, what a wonder, two minutes of rest, just for you. Two minutes of rest and a drink of water will do for your system. And now, and now that I'm talking about that, I'm going to go back to my stream overlay and see that, that like, three people have asked me to hit the button. No, they have not, actually. Sorry, I got distracted by I got distracted by Discord while I was thumbing through stuff. I'm kind of running low on steam, so I think this will probably be the last thing I do tonight. Plus, it's almost nine. Plus, it's nine thirty, and I should wrap up pretty quick here because I don't want to keep up keep the roommate up if he's gonna go to sleep and get up in the morning for work as well. So let's. Let me see what we're at. We're I don't even think we're going to break 300 calories right now. But I, I've been wrong before. And this definitely feels like more than 300 calories for me. Because I'm wearing that sauna vest in me. It's really hard for me to do that okay, one right now because my feet are sliding on the floor. <sighs> I'm not too torn up that I'm not going to break 300 calories for this workout today because I went to work at a physical labor job today. The fact that I've been able to work out for almost an hour is impressive to me. At least to me. I don't know about you guys watching. Maybe I'm weak for putting in seven hours worth of physical labor, coming home, working out for another hour, and saying I'm spent. Slowly twist to the right. This is good for exercising your lower body, abs, and back. Okay, almost fell. So, I guess that now that we're done with the video game talk for the week. So, I hope you guys have been thinking about it or getting prepared for it. But, okay, let's select the skin. What are you doing for your papa on Sunday? 
It do be Father's Day this Sunday. Father's Day, kind of a big deal for your dad. I know it's a big deal for my dad because I was the last, I was the last, but I was the one that left his house about five years ago. Or no, he was closer to four years ago now. I left his house about four years ago now. And my parents are empty nesters. So Father's Day and Mother's Day are really big deals for my parents. So, I try my best to make it something special. Not, I'm not the best at it, but I try. So, okay, let's move. I hope you. Uh, I hope you guys have been doing. Yes! I hope you guys Nicely have been uh, preparing yourself. Very nice. You, you can't get them something physically to show them, show them your support. Very nice. Excellent. Your father would at least appreciate a phone call. Nice. I know I'm bad at that, and I send him a text, and I need to actually call him more often now. But if you are able to, should your, should your, should your, uh, should your relationship allow it, contact your father this Sunday. Give him a high pop. How's it going? Wonderful. Good job. And again, if that's not possible, I understand. My brother, who's my adopted brother, can't do that with his blood father because he passed away 20 years ago, and he won't do that with his with my father, his adopted father, because they hit a they hit a rocky spot in the relationship, and they're tentative, nice at best right now. <laughs> They're at least conversing. They're not going out of their way to see, see each other. But they're at least talking. So that's why I say, if, if your relationship with your father allows it, give them a call. <laughs> or say something to them. I'm going to be rather crass when I speak about this, but... If your mother blew out her figure to bring you into this world, your father more than likely blew out his, blew out his back and his right. and his Fantastic. normal and his life in general to make sure you could stay in this world. Keep it up. Great. At least by most normal situations and connotations. Well by the means of normal okay. family upbringing. Father was using the breadwinner. Nowadays, that's not so much the case. But I'm speaking as, from my own perspective, not so much from yours as Ruse that is the same. Um, I don't think I'm going to be uploading this vod beforehand, so I can tell you what I got my father for Father's Day. Kind of some interesting stuff. I think I'll I think I'll like it. So, uh, um, my nephews have uh, taken to calling my father Papa. You know, Grandpa, Papa, you get it. Okay, let's move. So I found a shirt for him. Yes. I found a T-shirt for him. Just a Amazing. simple graphic tee. Very nice. It just says "World's Best Papa." Which I think he'll enjoy. It. Nicely done. And okay, wonderful. For anybody who watches, for anybody who watches uh, Stephen George's vlogs, um, the gift, a gift that Neat. Mal got Stephen awesome. is actually one I'm going to give my father. I'll pull it out of the bag here to show you, but. Well I'll see to wrap this gift between tomorrow night and uh, Saturday. But it's a uh, nice. uh, it's a grow your own mushroom uh, biome kind of thing. Excellent. 
Grow your own mushrooms, okay. and when they're growing, you can just chop them off the block, put them in the fryer, and eat them. Or put them on a fry pan and eat them. Drain off the block. That's what they grow on. My dad always thinks he has a green thumb, which a lot of times he's pretty good at growing stuff, but because of how you know, I inherited this trait too, so I'm not saying I'm innocent of this, but because of his uh, blunt nature and how he handles things, he's uh, not the best. And sometimes he undoes all of his hard work in the matter of two minutes. He does undoes three months of hard planting work in two minutes. I got him something okay. that he'll be able to enjoy. Perfect. Excuse me. I got him something to, he's going to be able to Very enjoy nice. once Excellent. everything's sun done. That requires very minimal effort to upkeep. I think the thing is literally, I think the instructions for it is literally spray it with a spray bottle of water once a day and keep it in low light rooms. And then two to three weeks later, you'll have mushrooms. That's literally all the directions are on the box. So, that's, that's what I'm going to give him in about three days' time. Actually, if we're looking at a calendar, one, two, two and a half days' time. 60 hours. I'm kind of excited to see what he's going to do with it, but I'm also kind of dreading him with it that he's just kind of, he's just going to kind of look at it and go, eh, and set it to the side and not do anything with it, because it's a weird gift, and even though a couple of my weird gifts have hit, most of my weird gifts don't stick. Most of my weird or gag gifts kind of get ignored. Although I laugh because the last gag gift I gave him was an oversized remote. I would take my Nintendo Switch out of the dock to show it for scale, but I don't want to do that. Um, actually, I can take any, any standard game case. No, I can take a Switch case. That's perfect. So, I got him a remote. It was It's longer than this. But I got him a television remote that's about this size for a gag gift like five years ago. Thinking, he won't keep it. I got it as a gag. I don't expect him to use it. They still, He still uses that thing to this day because it has giant buttons. So we can read it without putting on his glasses. going on outside this entire time on the street. Okay. Nice. In fact, work. over the course of, meteorologists basically said over the course of this evening, basically from 5 o'clock until midnight, is there were supposed to be strong enough thunderstorms that we were going to get an inch of rain. So, you know, Fantastic. seven hours, one inch of rain. Fantastic. That's kind of a lot. Considering it's not snow and doesn't accumulate in still standing forms that fast. That's kind of a lot. <laughs> but it's all supposed, to go, all supposed to go away and it's supposed to be almost 90 again tomorrow. Which, oh yeah, by the way, it's probably not so much more now that I'm at this point of the stream. But when I started the stream, it was about 80 degrees, if not warmer. Some people, 80 degrees or 22 degrees Celsius, I think that's what it is. <clears throat> Isn't that hot? 
in Wisconsin, where it's incredibly humid, seven times out of ten, that's basically uh, 95 degrees. <laughs> at 80, at 80, 80 to 85 degrees and 81% humidity. sit down with that soundtrack and I'm just going to listen to it on repeat and start being able to sing the lyrics to that. Until that point, no broken English for Scooter. No Americana for Scooter. Is it bad that I think speaking in Japanese means you have to kind of like Put on an accent to speak it properly, at least when you're learning it. I mean, I could literally say a sentence in my normal American accent of Shiroi Gohan Tohoshi. Yeah, Tohoshi. I could literally say that in my normal American accent, and it probably doesn't sound like Japanese at all. But if I put on my fake Japanese accent, Shiroi. Gohan Kohashi. It sounds actually like Japanese. Ten more. Come on. Well done. Okay. By the way, for anybody curious, I just said white rice Five with more. and chopsticks. Or white 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 rice with chopsticks. That's what that's what my uh, lesson planner has been hammering home these last these last this last week, week and a half. Is white shiroi gohan rice Toll and can also mean door depending on the context and hushi or hoshi which is chopsticks also takai expensive or oishi for tasty also soba and mochi and ocha ocha being green tea but everything else means the exact same thing it means in english as it means in japanese <laughs> This has been your two-minute buffer on Japanese that I give you from Duolingo. Use this knowledge moderately. You should feel it in your stomach, not your arms. A tough one, but you can do it. Because I can literally piece together things in... Because I could, of what I know how to say in Japanese, I could piece together something that, that probably is not proper pronunciation. <laughs> I can do that too. <laughs> okay, let's move. You can exercise your lower body well too. Well done. It, brought, it probably helps and it also doesn't help that Excellent. when they're teaching you words. When they're teaching you words and letters in uh, Duolingo, they have native, they have native speakers recorded for it. Very nice. So when you repeat it back to kind of emulate what you're hearing, Great. you kind of can actually put on that Excellent. Japanese accent. Now, where I go to Japan okay. and start talking to anybody today, they could they could tell to drop the hat that I am from America. Keep it up. Or as it was, or as it was explained to me, amazing. Amazing time. Great. Wonderful. Okay. Fantastic. Great. Awesome. Fine work. Nice. Fantastic. Keep it up. To that end. Very nice. I think amazing. I'm figuring out that. I could be wrong in this, but I think I'm learning that 
Uh, here down. When when Saint when uh Bright comes down at least, because here down and Katakana, they use the same for the most part. They use the same sounds. When you say them, they have the same they have the same sounds and volumes and accents. But here down is used for more proper He's used for more proper verbs and nouns. Or, excuse, yeah, more proper verbs and nouns are things that are commonplace all over the world. But things that are like proper nouns, names of companies, cities, uh, names of companies, countries, cities, things like that, that comes down to katakana. And they're saying it right. They're saying it right. But it has that it has that weird accent to it because America, 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 because they're using in some instances they're using less syllables to say the same word. A I C A, I think. I gotta think of it. I gotta think of it. Asia. Yeah, Asia is Asia. So they're using the same, they're using the same phonetic feeling ter uh, tonals when it comes to saying proper nouns. And I just had Germany pop up last night, but I forget it already. Germania or something like that. Okay, let's move. Jump forward and push in on like, the ring. Like for some in, for a lot of instances they're just trying to say the same thing with less syllables effectively. Good job. Sharp. Okay. Amazing. Eight. Sharp. Good job. And right now I'm kinda like I still have to do my Japanese lesson today, nice. so I'm gonna be going to bed rather late. <laughs> Because I still have to eat dinner, a proper dinner, not the Swedish fish, the hand, the three handles of Swedish fish I had before I started streaming tonight. But I need to eat an actual meal, or at least a meal of protein. Awesome. Uh, clean up after from this, which is gonna be just a quick shower. Now clean up from this, do my Japanese lesson, eat a meal, and. Think about doing and, and probably lose myself in responding to random things I've missed talking to people about over the last three hours. Great. Okay. Great. Oh yeah, by the way, I have to wake up at six o'clock tomorrow morning and go, go to work. It's currently quarter to ten. Actually, okay. no, it's ten, it's ten to ten. Wonderful. When it comes to a standard eight hour sleep schedule, you can tell I'm not gonna get a full eight hour sleep tonight. Oh, and I still have to make my lunch for tomorrow too. Granted, it's just gonna be a sandwich, but still I have to make lunch for tomorrow. And people say streamers don't sacrifice anything for their audiences. Sacrificing sleep and probably my and probably my peak productivity for tomorrow. Good job. Great. Very nice. Keep it up. Fantastic. Great. Nice. You got it. Good. Good. Alright. Excellent. Okay. Fantastic. Great. Flawless. I kind of wish this was over. This has gone on far longer than I wanted it to. Lucky break. I did say I would do additional tonight, but I was kind of kidding. At least I broke that 300 calorie cap I was worried about. Be done in the next 10 minutes. Right, right, right. 
Well, I say next 10 minutes. I say that as a broad term, just in case something screwy happens, but I'll probably be done streaming for the next 10 minutes because it's a weeknight, and general rule of thumb is anything after 10 o'clock is quiet time. For most people living with, with uh, anybody else. Sleep well through the night. I'm probably gonna be slamming energy drink tomorrow morning. But hopefully it's gonna be one of my last. Hopefully this is one of my last weeks or one of my last two weeks of slamming energy drinks to stay awake. So I go back to being no cap, being a no caffeine boy. Hoping for a pair, though. Drop your hips. Oh, my knee. Stretch. Victory. Okay. So while I go through the last few steps here. Did anybody have any questions they wanted to ask me before I wrap up tonight's stream? It's basically going to be a, uh, this is going to be the cooldown stretching after this, uh, pulse check. Alright! Yeah, we're after experience and money. We are done. And we'll pick up on that next week Thursday. All right, I have to go through some stuff here. Um, let's see. So, I'm gonna say Saturday is up in the air. I'm gonna tell you guys that Saturday is an up in the air let's topic for streaming. You won't need the ring con. For the length and what we stream, it's basically everything around Saturday because what I would like to achieve, Widen your stance, I'm kind of place your peeling back the curtain right now on a, and drop your hips. Rotate I'm kind of peeling back the curtain on uh, what I'm doing on my YouTube channel, channel. Now, but I started recording master mode for Ocarina of Time because a lot of people wanted to see that. Return so how I'm approaching that forward. is I'm taking my now Breath of the Wild right approach to it where I'm going to sit down and record the entire thing as much of it as I can in as many and as few Be takes sure as possible or as few run-throughs as possible. Bring yourself back slowly. So, I would like to... Bend your left knee. I realize it's like a 20-hour game. Oh, boy. Pull I realize it's a 20-hour game. The front of your thigh. Bare minimum. And I'm going to go for some of the side quest stuff, so a 30-hour game. But now I'm going to try and record as much of it side. as I can. The top of Between your foot now to stretch and your shin muscles as well. I saw something red and shiny on my desk. I had to look at it. I want to record as much of it between now and bring yourself back slowly. Stretch your between now and Father's Day as I can, and hold it with so that way I can spend pull in your arm every and day. The muscles of your left that way I can spend every day after work that I'm not streaming putting the, the basically everything else that's left in. Ocarina of Time now 3D together, on the opposite side. so I can move on Be to my next series to as, well. as soon as possible. 
Oh, it's not going to happen for a couple weeks yet. But I do want to tell you guys something that I forgot to mention is that I got a new job. Back slowly. I, I got I got and offered a new job and I take I'm gonna try and or I'm trying hand. to take the or the next step is to take While the drug screen for your it. Left wrist, stretch your left which arm that's gonna happen arm. hopefully within the next three days, I'm hoping. So um, middle of July I now would have a new job. On the opposite side. What this will affect for you guys is not, care not the, to bend the elbow days the I stream but more of the time of day I stream because my job is going to be closer it's also going to be a year round job Bring yourself back slowly. so unless it's a holiday Join I probably won't stream very late or very early with your palms facing out stretch out your back Because basically the new job I'm getting Bring is a seven to three shift slowly. compared to my current eight to four and shift. Your stretching is complete. Good job. I have a much shorter drive to work. Um, approximately a half hour drive compared to a 45 minute drive one way. So I'm gaining back 20 minutes to, an, to half an hour. Are we doing that right? Yeah. All right. No, I did a little. I'm gaining back 25 to 30 minutes of my day. I didn't read that. So I could probably stream, I can probably do, oh. I can actually probably stream a little bit more, like a tiny bit more each day when I do stream. But there's still, but streams are still gonna be an hour earlier than normal because I have to be to work an hour earlier than normal. Which will become the new normal. Trust me, it makes sense. Anyway, all right, I don't see any questions. So with that all done, let's see about raiding someone for tonight, for the evening. Once again, I want to thank Pretty of Time for the raid today, and Kasai, thank you for the host today, if you guys are still around. But for the raid, unless somebody has a, pre unless somebody speaks up with a preference, I'm just going to probably raid somebody. So... Uh, probably because of the Danganronpa news yesterday, or two days ago, excuse me, because of the Danganronpa news two days ago, Tom Fox is streaming Danganronpa 2, Goodbye Despair. Um, Ultra 24 is streaming Call of Duty Black Ops, Cold War. Uh, Botanic Sage is streaming Risk of Rain, True, Risk of Rain 2, trying out a new... 2D Live VTuber model. Um, it's basically going to be him as a toad with his, you know, it's his little toad model he has on his music stuff. Uh, Nakatilili is still doing is doing art, modeling his avatar character for streaming. Uh, Kenny is playing Final Fantasy VII Remake. And Alan is playing Monster Hunter Rise with friends. So, I'll run through the list again. Um, I'll be honest, I don't think there's anything I personally would watch. So I may actually let Auto Host take over for tonight. But, again, you got Tom Fox with Danganronpa 2. Alternate 24, Call of Duty. Botanic Sage, Risk of Rain 2. Nakatili, Art, modeling of his character model. Kenny, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Alan, Monster Hunter Rise. Does anybody have any preference? If there is no preference, I'm going to let Auto Host take over. Uh, that's the one I want. Sorry, I'm kind of basing around the room. Okay. So there is no preference. I don't see any preference on stream. And again, there's not something I'm personally going to go watch. So I'm just going to auto host take over for now. It's late for me. Everyone, thank you so much for watching tonight. I am going to go expire until Saturday. I'll see you guys on Saturday for something. Hopefully, hopefully I'm not playing Ocarina of Time Master Mode still. I'll see you folks then. Take care.